went from the celebration of Palm Sunday straight to next Sunday's celebration of Jesus' resurrection, we would bypass the core, the center of the meaning of the Christian faith. We would trivialize it, basically, like the world does. Like it's all about just being happy. No, the core message of the Christian faith is that happiness comes when you face reality. Happiness doesn't come through denying it or betraying it or selling it or ignoring it. It comes by going into it facing it, dealing with it. So when we talk about Jesus' passion, there are some who would say, you know, people are passionate about things. They get excited about things. They have strong feelings about those things. And then there's Jesus' passion, which was his suffering, his death. We talk about this final week of Jesus' life being passion week. I would contend that those are the same thing for Jesus. That Jesus' passion was what cost him his passion, his suffering and his death. And how I would describe that is, I would say that Jesus came to give people the possibility of living full, abundant, dignified, peaceful, just satisfied, fulfilled lives out of their core being on behalf of the world. That there's no difference between who you are, who God created you to be, and what the world needs. You don't have to sacrifice yourself to live fully and satisfy the world's needs. And You don't have to live by the values of the world in order to live fully, happily, successfully. So these last few days of Jesus' life, we see all these diverse characters who come across his path. And each of them says something about humanity. Each of them are an opportunity for us to come face to face with who we are and how we interact with Jesus. So there are those well-known characters like Peter, who's always opening his mouth and inserting a dirty sandal, and who in this case says, I'll go with you wherever you go, Jesus. And then when push comes to shove and he could end up on a cross beaten like Jesus, he says, ooh, never knew the man. That's one model. That's one opportunity we have to look at ourselves and say, when do I say, I don't know him. It's too weird. too out there. I don't want to be put in that crowd. Of course, there are Sometimes when I don't want to be put in that crowd, but that's a political story, right? And then there's the other well-known Judas, right? Judas who kept the disciples' purse strings, who when the woman poured the perfume, the very expensive perfume over Jesus' head and washed his feet with that perfume, Judas was the one who said, could have sold that and given the money to the poor or put it in the disciples' uh, pockets. Who? I don't know why. Decided that Jesus, his master, his rabbi, his teacher, was worth 30 pieces of silver. And then he couldn't live with himself, having betrayed Jesus. Then we have these two characters in the passage that was read today. We have Pilate, who's the only one that can permit the crucifixion, 
The Jews could not commit capital punishment on their own. They needed Roman authorization. And so Jesus had to go before Pilate. Pilate had to give the rubber stamp. And Pilate's got to do right by Jesus, and so he does this little interrogation, but he can't figure out why these folks want to crucify Jesus. And yet, he's savvy enough to know that this little parade that happened, this little crowd that's gathering, these people, these Jews, they have before been a thorn in the side of the Roman flesh. They have threatened with their uprisings, their zealots, their radicals, to make, you know, things for the Romans untenable. And so he's willing to keep the peace. He's willing to do what has to be done. And then we have Barabbas. And was Barabbas one of those zealots who was trying to overthrow the Romans, or was he just taking advantage? of the craziness of that day to wreak his own power, to kill his own enemies. Or was it just psychotic? We aren't sure, but he's on the street again. And where do we, where do we have our own neuroses? Where do we function in ways that are not like living? And where do we compromise Because we're afraid of popular opinion, because we might be laughed at, because it might, might cost us somehow. And where do we betray our Christian faith by the ways we behave, the things we say, the company we keep? You know, it's said that the pain or the discomfort of what we know is much easier to deal with than the discomfort of making change or the unknown of a future that's different. It's much easier to deal with the pain we know than with something unknown that might be better, but involves change. I wonder if you've had the opportunity to live your passion. Seems like it's so seldom in this world that the way we spend the bulk of our time and our work is really what we're passionate about. That we feel like it really makes a difference in the world. I wonder if in spite of that you've been able to find a way to live out your passion through a hobby, some leisure activity, some volunteer time some other way, some other place in your life. I wonder if those of you who are in retirement have been able to find a way now to live out your passion, to discard, to disregard the inanity, the inaneness that's out there. You know, I, I think about angry birds and my Kardashians, and I think, seriously? I mean, maybe for a break, for a minute, but whoa, how much time can you spend doing that? So, so you have this palm branch, right? And, and you know that if you fiddle with it a little bit, you can create a cross like this. And if you don't know how to do that, there are some instructions back there by the basket of palm branches. And I wonder if, if we could, if we could use this cross this year as a way to constantly be reminded of our passion. If we could put this cross, or maybe you don't have any more fingers, maybe you just want to take a palm branch and, and you know, put it behind your mirror in the bathroom, or, or you know, wrap it around your at some place prominent where you're reminded throughout the year that Jesus' passion was so that we might live as passionate people. 
that Jesus came to uh, help us get rid of the anxiety of keeping up with the Joneses or doing what's the politically correct thing or trying to achieve what the world thinks is success at the sacrifice of our passion. That we might be reminded that it's okay to look silly, to be silly. It's okay to let go of those things that the world thinks is important. So that we might have so that we might live our passion. But it's the only way, you know, the only way to peace. The only way to true